So we've recently started to get this alarm. And you can see that it's complaining that it's got no GPS data. Um, so that uh, VHF picks its GPS data up from a small box that actually lurks in here. Let's see if I can find it. It's this box here, this Raymarine interface. Um, and for some reason, the, see, there's the N NMEA. Um, so the CTOR comes into that, and um, that gives the GPS an NMEA GPS output. Um, for some reason, it's stopped working. And when you take the lid off this, there are no lights. So you can see there are no lights on this. And uh, they used to light up at the top. So the CTOR light used to be on, and the NMEA light used to be on. The only difference that's happened here is that I'm taking the input for the Raspberry Pi off this to get the data into the Raspberry Pi. So this is the CTALK interface that's in my hand. This is the VHF output. And then this side is going back uh, into the Raspberry Pi. So we're going to take this home and just see if we can work out what's gone wrong with that. But for some reason, it seems to be have no power now. So not quite sure, but another thing to investigate. So the first thing I'm going to do with this is I'm going to have a look to see if there are any um, components that look damaged. So I've just undone it from its kind of case. Um, and if we look off the back, it doesn't seem to be any damage. I first sort of had a quick look at these, um, whatever this is around these components here, but it looks like glue. Because um, sometimes if a capacitor blows, it can blow out stuff like that. I mean, there's no... There's no signs of damage or black or burn marks or anything like that on it. But this little device here, this LM2931, that's some sort of voltage regulator. We've got a capacitor here, so that must be on the power side. Um, and I think that's where I'm going to start with it, really, because it used to light up. So the power comes in on the CTORC interface. There's a positive and a negative, so the 12-volt power. And then the yellow is actually the CTORC information. This black... And blue here is for an alarm, so you can forget them. They're the three normal sort of C talk communication interfaces that you have. Enemy A in, which we didn't do. However, we did do out, um, and that was what was going to the VHF. Okay, so I have got a little battery, which I've used um, previously. Um, so we're about 12 and a half volts from the battery. We've got a fuse in line, and um, I've got my uh, connections in here. So we've got a positive and a negative connected up. Um, and then you can see, if I just put a bit of pressure on that side. So there you go, hopefully you can see now that um, we've got 12 volts going across the board. So those terminals are just basically joined together. So now we need to do some tests on this little unit here to see if this is actually uh, regulating the voltage. Now I'm not quite sure what voltage this will give out. Could be five, could be three volts. Um, so what we'll do is we'll do a few checks there now and see what happens. So hopefully you can see on the back of the um, voltage regulator here, um, we're just going to run a couple of tests. So it needs to be that way around. The, the plate that it's kind of stuck on, this part here, this is actually earth and so is the centre pin. So if we put our um, one probe on that side and then if we test the left, as you can see now, that's probably upside down for you, but 10.9 um, volts there. Centre should be nothing, which it is, and the right one is actually 4.9 so we are getting voltage coming out of that so that's working so it's not that so next step is really to try and trace that circuitry a little bit and try and understand if there's another component in the way um, that's potentially not providing power um, or we've got a dry joint or something like that I mean this this board was made in 04 so it's a few years old now um, but I don't really want to go out and buy a new one if I don't have to and so I'm going to just persevere a little bit and see if I can understand what's actually going on with it so I did several more checks on this board. I did some Googling, I looked on forums. Basically they said, once you've checked the power, there's not a lot else you can check. There's not a lot of information about the board and, and the components because it's obviously a, a bought product. So I did as much as I could, but I couldn't get it to work again. So on to plan B. Probably the most cost effective option is to go for the C-Yak range of products from Yak Bits. They seem to be about 65 to 70 pounds and you can pick up different CTORC to NME or USB bridges. However, a few years ago on the YBW forums, um, somebody developed uh, a series of products uh, called YAP, Yet Another Pointless Project. So these projects are put together by Angus McDoon, a user on YBW forums. 
and he's put some really good information there. What he's done now is he's put them onto GitHub. So you can go onto GitHub and you can download the plans and get the PCBs made up. So that's what I decided to do. So the first thing you're going to need to do is get yourself a copy of Design Spark, and this will open the schematic and the PCB. Next, click on Output and Manufacturing Plots. This is how you generate the Gerber file. And this is what the manufacturing site will use to create your PCB. Hit Run and it will generate the files for you. Don't worry about this message too much because you have to tell the PCB site how big the PCB actually is. So I uploaded this file to JLC PCBs and at this point I had no idea what was going to turn up. But this is what actually arrived. I ended up with five perfect boards. I then started to add the components. So from the schematic software you can print a component output list, basically a bill of materials. A couple of days later I got to this stage just waiting for the actual three chips now to arrive. While I was waiting, I thought I'd take a look at MP Lab, which is how I'm going to compile the actual code to run on the chips. And this is where things started to go a little bit sideways, because the version of code that this was compiled for is a few years old. So I got in touch with uh, Angus, and he helpfully sent me some information on where to download older versions of MP Lab. I had to run this on Windows, but the code compiled, and away I went. I then used a PIC kit 3 to connect to the chip and programmed it. I took it to the boat, I connected the CTORC and I connected the RS232 output to a USB to serial converter. Within a few seconds, I could see data, and this was coming from the CTOR network. So then I decided to connect up the VHF, and the GPS was restored. So here's the little converter um, that's converting from CTOR to NMEA for the VHF. Now, it's all mounted in a little kit, again, a couple of little bolts just glued down in this, and I've used the grommets actually from um, the Ray Marine box. This component here, this U5, that one, that gets quite warm, so apparently that's running pretty much at its capacity. So what I'm going to try and do is fashion a little heat sink. You can get some little clip-on ones, but if I can make one, obviously, then that keeps all my costs down. So I'm going to try and just make a little heat sink for that, um, just to try and uh, cool it a little bit, just maybe across the board a little bit, like or, or sort of this direction a little bit, but I've obviously got to make sure it doesn't touch any of the components, otherwise it'll probably short out. Okay, so what did it cost me? It cost £4.50 pretty much to get the boards from wherever they were made to the UK. It cost £3 in resistors, £13.70 for the remaining components because they had to come from CPC. I spent £21.26 on the PIC, uh, programmer the PIC2, and I spent about £15 on the three chips because at the moment there's such a shortage the price has skyrocketed. So in total, just under £50.